What's going on, guys? This is Mr. Teej, 66's Movie Reviews. I am Mr. Teej. Today's movie review is Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, this movie's getting a lot of good reviews. In fact, I think it's 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. Everyone see, really seems to like it, but unfortunately, I found it to be incredibly underwhelming and just... Not good. I was I was really shocked at how much I didn't like this movie. But let's get to the good points, too, first, because there are some good points. Tom Holland, I think, is very good as Peter Parker. He's very likable. He handles the one-liners incredibly well. Um, he's, like, 20, so it's a lot more believable for him to be a high school student than either uh, Tobey Maguire or uh, Andrew Garfield, who were, I believe, in their mid-20s by the time they did did the, the uh, part, and it really showed. Michael Keaton was also a top-notch villain. He has very interesting, very believable motivations. Um, you know, one of the things that common complaints about the MCU is when the villains have been kind of underwhelming, and thankfully he is the exception. I loved his costume design uh, for, for the Vulture. That was very well handled. You know, it was believable. It, it looks kind of hand, you know, put together through spare parts. So that was helpful. Uh, there are some clever ideas occasionally. Like, I like the part where basically Peter is in the suburbs and he can't swing around from buildings, obviously. So he has to basically run through run through the street and run through people's homes. That was a very clever idea. There, there's, a, there's a very interesting plot twist that happens with the villain toward the end, which I didn't see coming, which I really should have, but I didn't. And I was like, oh, shit, wow. Unfortunately, the negatives far outweigh the positives in this movie. There's really not much depth to it. One of the things I didn't like about the movie is it just it felt like it was basically just action scenes and humor. And, you know, those things can be good, but it just I, the movie didn't have that much depth. It didn't really spend much time on, on characterization. There's a part toward the end where Peter ha basically makes this big, huge decision, spoiler war warning, not to join the Avengers because the whole time, whole movie, he's basically been like, I want to join the Avengers. And at the end, Tony Stark's like, oh, you're an Avenger. And he's like, no, I'm going to stay on the ground and, you know, help the little people. It's supposed to be a, you know, cheer-worthy moment where you go, yeah, all right, Peter. Instead, I'm kind of like, okay, well, that's good, I guess. Like, it just, I don't know. It's hard to explain. You watch the Sam, Ra the first two Sam Raimi films, and they, he really spends a lot of time on character development. Like, there's an, there's entire scenes where basically... You know, it's nothing but characters talking. This felt more fast-paced, like we need to get get to the action, the action, the action. And the characters really suffer, you know. I, I just, I didn't care. I didn't feel any kind of drama whatsoever toward, toward, toward really anything in this movie. The action scenes were incredibly workmanlike and just not very exciting or really creative. It could be that this is the sixth Spider-Man movie, so we've seen him do... All, you know, his web singing for a long time, and there's really not much more you can do with it, but I still was just sort of like, mm, you know, he's swinging around, shooting his webs, you know, whatever, you know, I've seen it before, unfortunately. Uh, the high-tech costume was a bad idea, like, basically, Tony Stark gives him a high-tech suit with, like, in all kinds of, like, you know, fe features on it, kind of like his Iron Man suit. I hated that idea. It robs him of being an everyman. It's the fact that, you know, he has no money. He has no technology. He just has a suit and maybe some web shooters. Like, I it was such a lame attempt to try to do an Iron Man suit. There's even an AI in the suit, which talks to him. It's such a blatant copy of uh, Jarvis from Iron Man. I really did not like that. That was one of my biggest pet peeves with this movie. Get rid of the high-tech suit. It's so dumb. There's also no mention of Uncle Ben. Now, I understand they don't want to do the origin story again, and that's fine. But that's a huge part of his character, is his guilt about not, you know, being able to save his uncle. And they, they could have done something with it. They could have shown some flashbacks, maybe have Aunt May and him talk about it a little bit. But they don't mention it at all. And that's one of the things that gave, you know, the, especially the first two Sam Raimi films such heart, is it was his guilt about not, you know, being able to save his uncle. And that was a big mistake. The mantra really isn't reinforced. With great power comes great responsibility, which is also, you know, part of Uncle Ben. Like, I just, you, you never get the sense that his loved ones suffer because of what of what he has to do. Or if you do, it's very just lip service. Like, it's just, oh, wait, we have to get on to the next action scene, which goes back to my point about there not being any depth to anything. Like, it's not reinforced, and I didn't care. You know, a lot of the secondary characters I thought were really underdeveloped, especially Marissa Tomei as Aunt May. She could have been played by anybody. She's only in, like, three scenes, 
And, you know, she's supposed to sort of be the mother figure. And they do a half-baked attempt to try to put that in there. But, again, it's just... It goes back to my mantra of what was wrong with this movie. It's too quick pace, quick pace. We need to get to action scenes and action scenes and have lots of humor. And the drama really, really suffers because of it. Also, too many people know Peter Parker as Spider-Man. Which, you know, Tony Stark knows. Um, his friend knows. It's just, you know, the villain knows who he is. It's just... One of the things about the Sam Raimi films, that, the first two at least, that worked so well is the fact that no one knew he was Spider-Man. He had to deal with this all by himself. And, you know, the just the guilt and the, you know, the gnawing away at him that he can't tell anybody, he can't share his feelings. He's, you know, going through these amazing, you know, changes in his life and he can't tell anybody. And it's made it so tragic and so heart and so heartfelt. In this movie, too many people know who he is. You never get that sense. So, again, once again, going back to my first point. There's not enough drama or not enough depth to it. It doesn't help that uh, you have Wonder Woman and Logan, which have come out this year, which are insanely better films. Like, they really, you know, trans Logan especially really transcended the superhero genre and just became a tragedy. This movie feels like leftovers. You know, if Wonder Woman and Logan were, were you know, first-rate, you know, French restaurant meals with, you know, seasoning, you know, very well-cooked... This is like McDonald's. It's just very half-baked, very thrown together, and just underwhelming, you know. And the MCU really has to start doing something because they're getting their asses kicked in the superhero genre. Because, you know, you have Logan and Wonder Woman, which were absolutely fantastic films, great action, great character development, and even Deadpool from last year, which, you know, took the superhero genre in new directions. Overall, this movie was an incredible disappointment. I was just... I really can't believe I didn't like it that much because, as you know, Spider-Man is my favorite character, my favorite superhero character. So I went in this movie with a lot of expectation and it just let me down. It's just, it's one of the more forgettable Marvel films. And it really makes me wonder, you know, if the glue is starting to come undone for the MCU because Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was also kind of meh, was okay. So anyway, that's, I'm sure that's not going to be a popular opinion on uh, around because uh, of all the good reviews. But hey, that's how I felt at the end. It was just meh. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. This is Mr. Teach 66, and I'll see you next time for more Mr. Teach 66's movie reviews.